So hi everyone, my name is Nicola and today I'm going to be talking about the wild boar. So I'm going to talk, start off talking about the wild boar species generally and then I'm going to go into more detail about a subspecies called the Indian boar. Uh, so the wild boar has got the largest geographic range of any large mammal. It can be found on every continent except for Antarctica. So this map shows um, in black the areas where it's a native species and then in grey it shows where it's an invasive species where it's been introduced by humans. Uh, so it was taken from Europe by people like this guy, Christopher Columbus, to um, whenever they went on their boats and their voyages, they'd take it as a food source. So um, Christopher Columbus introduced it into the Americas. It was also introduced into the um, Oce uh, Australasia and uh, South Africa as well as other places. Uh, so because they're found um, so widely um, dispersed, they've got a lot of different habitat ranges that they can um, utilise. So that includes like dry desert areas like the photo in the top here, uh, but also more temperate climates, um, a lot of forest areas. And as you can see, they also be in the snow in some of their ranges as well. So I'm going to talk more specifically now about the uh, subspecies, the Indian boar, which is uh, found, as you can see here in the green area, which is India. Sri Lanka, Nepal, and then on the east in Thailand and Myanmar as well. Uh, so they're distinct from other Eurasian boar species um, in their morphology. So you can see they've got a dorsal crest or a mane which runs along their backs, which is made of long erectile bristles. And these bristles are also found on their cheeks and their lower jaw, so it's kind of a bearded appearance. Um, and one of the differences between these and other species is that they haven't got an underfur. So if you look at this bottom photo here, they kind of have a thin sparse covering of fur. Um, but even when they're this sort of sparsely furred, you can still see their dorsal crest running along their backs. And apparently people call them razorbacks because of this. Um, so another morphological difference with other boar species is their size. So they're quite a tall species, uh, subspecies. They can be three foot up to their shoulder height, about 90 centimetres, and they can be five feet long, so around 150 centimetres in length. And their weight varies anything from 90 to 135 kilos. Um, the males are much bigger than the females. So these top weights would be the males. And another way that they're different from other Eurasian boar species is their skull shapes. So they've got a uh, much taller, sharp, taller skull with sharper features. So they've got kind of sharply pointed ears, which are quite a bit smaller, and they've got proportionally smaller teeth as well and shorter nasal bones than other subspecies. Um, and as with the rest of the swine family, their most acute sense is their smell. Uh, their hearing and their vision isn't quite so strong. Um, so, you know, they've kind of got a strong sense of smell in all the swine species because you have things where people have used them like truffle snuffling pigs and stuff. They can kind of detect foods with their sense of smell. Um, and they communicate with each other with grunts and squeals. There's a... Yeah, so they're pretty loud. Um, that's about 115 decibels it can be. And context, that's um, louder than a motorbike. <laughs> yeah, sounds a bit like a motorbike and motorbikes can be about 100 decibels. So it's even louder than that. Uh, so they're social animals and they live in matriarchal family groups called sounders. And in a sound, you'll have um, interrelated females and their offspring from previous seasons. Uh, the adults, the adult males tend to live solitary lives and they only join the sounders during the breeding season. Um, so the gestation period for the females is about 115 days and they'll leave the group at the end of this period to go and build a nest or a den and then they'll give birth to a litter of four to eight piglets in that den. And then when they're four or five days old, she'll take them back to rejoin the sounder group. Uh, unfortunately, these piglets are kind of the favourite food of some large felids like leopards and tigers. Um, and also the adults can be preyed upon by them, predated upon by them as well. Um, so that's kind of one of the differences with European species. They don't have to worry about these large carnivores, whereas the Indian boars do. Uh, so as with all um, swine families, they're versatile omnivores and they travel with their uh, sounders, their families to forage for food. 
So they can eat a wide, wide range of uh, food types, but they mainly tend to like um, tubers, like vegetable matter, uh, like potatoes and that kind of thing. Uh, this photo here is an interesting screenshot from a video of an adult boar eating a piglet. So they can eat carcasses, but this is kind of a unique example of cannibalism that someone's managed to get on camera. It happened in 99. Um, so I think that could be something to study further, see if it's kind of a common occurrence. Uh, but yeah, so as I said earlier, they mainly eat vegetable matter um, and they have a bit of a taste for agricultural crops. Um, as I said, they have like potato and um, tapioca root is one of their favorite foods, but here you can see they've um, uprooted a wheat field as they go in their family groups to eat they can do some serious damage which obviously creates a conflict with humans and these headlines here kind of just show another type of conflict with humans which is just that they're quite aggressive and can attack people because their habitats are quite often more urbanized they can kind of be seen to attack people in the towns and villages where they live. Um, so yeah in terms of human conflict there's a few different levels to it there's these um, cases of damaging crops and attacking people which can lead to revenge killings um, but there's also the other side of it which is that people have been hunting boars um, since the beginning of time really for the meat trade um, which although it's illegal it still happens now uh, but fortunately for the boar they're not um, they're very versatile and they seem to be able to overcome the persecution that they've been facing for the last sort of however many centuries so they're not a concern in terms of their conservation they're listed as least concern on the red list um, and their populations are yeah, obviously doing pretty well so yeah thank you for listening thank you, thank you very much